This is an old comp rig. It would normally have 2.2s on it with a 12 and a half inch wheelbase. People didn't put their battery packs up in the hood like I'm going to do. They actually put their battery packs on the front axles. Thank you for tuning in today. I am very excited for today because I get to play with new toys. Scale accessories. Scale accessories. Today I have a box from Hobby King. You are probably familiar with Hobby King since they are essentially the sole company that brought hobby to the masses. There were certainly lots of other companies that did, but Hobby King was available when a lot of other companies were kind of in a decline. They really ushered in the lithium battery market, I feel, to the world. And also a lot of, uh, let, let's call it what they are, cheap airplanes. I would say that the downfall of everybody using Hobby King for their airplane supplies is that we really can't get balsa airplanes anymore. You can't get covered wings unless you're really searching out for old kits or if you know how to build your own kits. Everything is foamies these days. Not only is it easier to ship, but they're cheaper to make. And uh, you know, let's be honest, a lot of us crash and when you crash your foamy, it's also easy to fix. So while Hobby King certainly ushered in the area, the air, the area, <laughs> the era of foam airplanes, I really miss being able to buy a Balsa airplane, especially gliders, but c'est la vie. What we have today is a box from Hobby King that is gonna help me in my hobby endeavors, and that is extra receivers for my GT3C controller that is hacked, and also some fresh batteries for another project that I'll be doing here in the future. So I just wanted to open the box, talk about what I got, why I got it, and I would like to know if you would also use this type of stuff or if you use Hobby King for your hobbies. So as you can see, I already cut open the box. I like to do that just to be sure that I know what I'm actually opening because it's bitten me before, and oh, I'm looking for this part, and they didn't even ship it. So, for this GT3C controller, which is hacked, by the way, I've been looking into whether these are still available. You still can buy these controllers. They're a little bit older, and you can get a hack service from RC Addict. It costs $40, and if you like it, then give a $40 holla to RC Addict. I'm not sure if they sell the controllers as well, but you can get them all over the internet still, but... This has actually been one of the best cheap controllers, and I say cheap because, yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, it's cheap. I don't care if I do this to it. I'm not going to be doing that to my many hundred dollar Futabas or Spectrum radios, but this guy, you know, I would throw it hard, but I still want to use it, so I'm not going to try to test the point too much. At any rate, to the point, I got 10 new receivers so that I can basically update all my rigs to have this, except for my competition rigs. I have a new Futaba that's coming on the way for those, but for something that my kids are probably going to drive or that I just want to go out and be able to drive in the rain and the slush and not worry about, oops, you know, if I drop it. These guys are really good. In the hacked version, you get a lot more model memories to them. I think it's 100, and normally it's like 10 or 8 that you get if it's not hacked. Um, you also get a lot more functionality on mixing and everything like that. So I, I would really suggest if you're looking for a inexpensive controller, you know, the throttle feel isn't bad. Maybe we shouldn't call them cheap. It's a, it's a dirty word in this hobby. The, the throttle feel is actually really good for how inexpensive these are. And you can get away with about an $80 total hack controller. It even has a lithium battery in it, which lasts forever. It charges off a USB. This totally was not a video to brag about this, con this uh, radio here, but I can recommend them. I can really highly recommend them. This one has done me great for years. We have another one at the shop that is not hacked that we use on those as well. And I mean, I got no complaints. So. 10 new receivers. This is the HK GT2R, which is actually a three channel controller. I don't know why they called it the 2R when it should be like a 3R, but it's a three channel receiver. It's really lightweight. They're easy to take out of the case and waterproof if you want to. They also have a waterproof version if you want, but if you are like me and maybe it's gonna go into a comp rig or you don't have a lot of space, you wanna be able to take off that receiver box. But honestly, I mean, these guys are really tiny. It's a very small and thin receiver. They do the job well. I mean, if you're looking for something that's inexpensive, this is a great match. So this is gonna do exactly what I need to do, and that is going to be updating the radios, especially my TRX-4s. I've had a few of them that failed on me. Now I just realize that it's not gonna work because I need four channels for the TRX-4, but you know, say la vie, I'll figure it out. We'll figure something out. So we got that, we got that. Oh, and I got another one in here. The other thing that I needed was some very small batteries for my competition rigs and also for the rebuild 
of this Bastard Junior chassis. As you can see, there's nowhere to put a battery in it provided. You can put it on this back deck here. What I did was I make a little styrene battery tray that fits down in here. Uh, just, you know, zip tie it in and that's where my battery is going to end up going. So I needed to get a variety of small size batteries to see what fits and also to ensure that I have a long enough run time. I want the biggest battery that I can fit in there. It's probably going to be about an 850 milliamp hour pack. But I won't know until I try and until I get into that project. So we got a couple of random batteries here. Let's see what we got. When you get really tiny packs, you need a pretty good discharge rate. And the discharge rate is at odds with the size of your battery. So a 25C pack, which you really can't even buy anymore, is going to be smaller than a 45C pack. And I was really hoping to find some 25C packs because I'm going to use a brush motor in that build. But say la vie, it doesn't seem that 25C is even a thing you can buy anymore. Uh, so I went with some 850s. Ugh. They did a really good job of bubble wrapping these. Uh, 850 nanotechs, these are three cell 70C discharge. I don't know if I trust that with, you know, the, with such a, can it really push almost 70 amps? Mm, eh, who knows? I don't need that many amps. All I need is a runtime. Uh, 0.85 amp hours. I like how they rate them that way instead of 850 milliamp hours. So that's kind of cool. I probably got two of those. No, I didn't. I got a different pack. Let's see what I got. I don't even remember. This is the most fun unboxing because I don't remember what I bought. You know, you go long enough. I mean, are you like that? Are you as bad as me where you buy stuff and you don't remember? And then it's like a surprise when it comes in. Oh, what did I get myself for Christmas? I don't know. Maybe you are. All right. And then we got this little uh, 500 milliamp hour. Oh, and it's got the teeny tiny little XT30s on them. I use XT60s these days. Maybe I'll have to get some XT30s for my comp rig because it, it doesn't need XT60s, but geez, these are tiny. I don't know. I, I probably won't even be able to unplug these myself without pulling on the wire. Uh, half, half an amp hour. Let's just use the, the new ratings. And what is this? Uh, also 70C. As you can see, the thickness of those packs is quite a bit different. Uh, of course, the 850 is not quite twice the runtime, so it should be about twice the height. And then what looks like some little baby packs, some little bitty, little bitty baby packs. I know y'all love it when I talk with baby talk, don't you? Let me know in the comments how much you love the baby talk. All right, all oh, the tiniest little 450 milliamp hour pack. Oh, it's only 45 C discharge. So let's see. Well, that's kind of weird that it's thicker. It is a little shorter. But it actually looks like it may have more volume than the 500 milliamp hour. I'm sorry, half amp hour pack. This one is a 0.45 amp hour pack. And I feel like I may have gotten two of these because they are so tiny. A 450 is not going to last very long. If you're into competing, yeah, it's going to get you through a course, maybe two, maybe three, if you have a really efficient setup and you don't have a lot of wheel speed and you don't have some really uh, amp hungry servos. And to tell you the truth, these servos are going to be your biggest amp draw on the average rig. All right. Yeah. So another uh, 0.45 amp hour pack. These are tiny little guys. They weigh, I don't know, about nothing. So there we go. We got some new batteries just to try out. I'll probably have to get a couple of more. I haven't bought new batteries for myself in a really long time. I've actually been uh, relying on my friends at... I've actually been relying on my friends at Helios RC to provide batteries because I focus on motors. Let's, let's be truthful here. I have completely forgotten about the battery game. I don't carry them in the store. I don't want to carry them in the store because that's a lot of liability to have batteries, ESCs, motors, everything that could possibly go wrong in your rig. Uh, batteries, shipping, you know, the whole deal. It's just not something that I want to get into. I will gladly let Helios take care of it for me. Or in this case, Hobby... King, Turnigy, and Nanotech will take care of it for me, and we'll see how they do. I'll let you know in a future update when I actually get to use these cells. So what else we got in here? Oh, hey, look, another battery. Another battery. And this one is probably the same as another one. Let's see. Yeah, 0.85, another 850. So I've got multiples of the 850. I think I did the measurements, and it, it'll actually fit in my Bastard Junior. And I want as much runtime as possible. And, uh, you know, worst case scenario, Maybe I could put two packs on there in different places. And I would like to actually talk about what we used to do. If you're into competing, you, you know where we used to place the batteries. But, so, 
we're looking at this rig. This is an old comp rig. It would normally have 2.2s on it with a 12 and a half inch wheelbase. People didn't put their battery packs up in the hood like I'm going to do. They actually put their battery packs on the front axle. So you would have a servo, you know, sitting right here in the middle. And as you can see, there's lots of room on the sides of it. And so we would actually have plates. Let's see, do I have any axles with plates? Mm, I don't have anything handy right now, but we would have these long plates that stretch across the entire axle. It allows you to mount your servo and your battery on front. You get more forward weight bias. And then a non-scale rig that is totally cool. As you can see, lots of room for me to put this 850 on there and still have a servo. Uh, uh, it may be a little easier to fit these, these 450s on there with a servo because the servo is of course gonna be really close to the battery. But I'm looking for more of a scale rig to just go and have fun with. So I'm going to end up putting the battery up here in the chassis. And if I need more runtime, then, you know, I may put one on the top deck back here or, or below the deck because I think we might, we just might have enough travel to make that fit. And if that doesn't work, then I can put one on the back axle even. You know, it's, it's whatever. We're just having fun with some toys. Scale accessories, scale accessories, uh, just having fun with scale accessories. So, all right, so we got the batteries, we got the radio, and evidently, somebody heard me talking about needing a new blade in my knife, and whoever packed the box, I guess lost his old used heart, what would this be called? Uh, uh, a something knife, a, a box cutter. Oh, that's neat, it's got a little, got a little quick release on there, standard blades, definitely used blade. <laughs> So whoever packed the order, uh, thanks, I guess. Got a new knife, a uh, heart, something. It seems decent. It, it, uh, it closes, it opens, just a little, little press button. So uh, yeah, a quick review on this heart box cutter. Hey, it cuts boxes. It closes with one hand, it opens with one hand. Five stars from whoever gave that to me, thanks. Oh, and it's even got a little belt loop attachment. And finally, I got a new charger. I will tell you what, I haven't gotten a new charger for myself since Hyperion was the charger to get. Does anybody remember Hyperion chargers? Do you still have one and what model is it? I still have a couple of six cell versions and some dual six cell, which they call 12 cell versions. I don't even remember the model of it. It's been so many years. They did not have AC on them. You had to get your own power supply, which you know, for me, no big deal. Get a power supply, wire it up and do the thing. But this guy is a dual charger, 200 watt, uh, 10 amp, up to 6S LiPo with a built-in AC converter. So this will just plug into my wall. And to tell you the truth, this old uh, chargery that I've been using, let's just grab it. These things, I've got a couple of these, the 680B plus that we even use for breaking in motors at the shop. It's a really useful old tool. It has like a hot wire mode on it for foam cutting. It tells you how old it is when it's got a mode for do-it-yourself foam cutting of wings. Does anybody cut their own wings anymore? I mean, we, we just talked about how you, you can only buy foamies these days, but back in the day, foamies were hand cut. You would get this long hot wire and then you had a guide that you would make your airfoil with and then we would cover that foam over with either fiberglass or a uh, heat shrink. What's that stuff called? You, you probably remember, I don't remember anymore. Uh, the wing covering, uh, foil sort of thin stuff with a heat shrink gun and you got the got the hot iron on it you know you get your creases and uh yeah whatever those are i don't think anybody does that anymore so it's probably about time to retire this maybe bring it over to the shop for for breaking in because it does have a nice motor break in mode yeah <laughs> does anybody know if there's any chargers left that have motor break in mode I want some backups for this and I have yet to be able to find one. I even contacted Chargery and tried to buy some more of these guys and they said they wouldn't make them unless I wanted to buy like a thousand units. And who wants to buy a thousand units of a uh, old kind of outdated charger? Because I mean, this guy is, let's see what we got. It's 200 watts, just, just like this guy, but it doesn't have AC input. The buttons on it are getting, uh, they're not actuating on me anymore all the time. So it's getting kind of fussy. Uh, it's got this funky old output. I just use a 6S tap on it. It's probably what I'm gonna do on this. Just shove a 6S tap on there. And then uh, let, let's say for this three cell pack, I just biased it all the way down to our most negative and plug it in like that. 
that's actually how I have used balance ports since the beginning when it's a 6S charger. And this one's kind of cool because it's got the different ports on there, but they're all hooked together so you can use one 6S lead and then just bias it down to most negative, negative and negative together, and the charger sees it either way. So you don't have to fiddle with a bunch of different harnesses or you, know, you don't have to plug it in directly and have it be really short and next to it you can fit it inside of a LiPo bag when you charge this way, having a little bit extra leads, et cetera, et cetera. 680B plus, two thumbs up from me. I've had these things since they came out and they're still working great, but you know, it's getting finicky. So I, I, wanna, I wanna open this up. I have always been looking at these ISDT chargers as soon as they came on the market. Very small, very compact, very power dense, and also seem to have a good set of features. So, and nice box too. Ah, uh, revolution starts here. Quick charger reference guide. Ah, uh, ISDT, yeah, whatever. What is this, some sort of cover? What does it say? Uh, this sticker helps to remove the mask from the screen guard. Huh, whatever. It does look like a, a nicely packed charger. Come on now. Cool, more packaging. Um, maybe some, hey, we got our, got our nice, uh, AC cord here, you know, got no, no ground on it, no case grounding. Hopefully this is not an aluminum case. It's an aluminum case. Uh, wait, you know how we can tell if it's aluminum or not? Brand new charger. Oh, it's plastic. Okay, we're good. It's just cold plastic from being in my cold hobby house. So here we go. This thing is nice and tiny. It's got the built-in fans. Uh, hopefully it's not too loud. But it does have the built-in fans, which is usually a good sign. Because passive cooling only gets you so far in a charger. Active cooling is... I wouldn't say where it's at, but oh boy. Read manual before use. They got all these stickers on here like I'm some sort of newbie. Who do they think I am? <laughs> do you know anybody who's actually used that in uh, public? Do you know who I am? I know how to work a charger. I'm gonna take these stickers off. Uh, before usage, please take off acrylic film. No, so what, what was this about? I don't understand what that extra piece of plastic was for. And I refuse to read the manual. So I'm just gonna, you know, not want to know what I'm doing. All right. Um, yeah, so we'll be plugging directly into this port. I'm stealing my extension and it's gonna go in here. Let's see, how many is this? This is only a 5S? Is that a 5S? Yeah, I don't got any 6S batteries anyway, so it doesn't even matter. So uh, we'll just bias it towards the negative. Oh, hey, they got it marked on the case as negative. That is nice. That's so nice of them. There we go. So we just, you know, plug that into there, plug that in there, bam, 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 ready to go. So I guess that is everything that was in the package. Uh, scored a new knife out of the deal. So thanks to whoever packed the order. If you want it back, uh, hey, and you're watching, leave a note in the comments and I'll ship it back to you if you want. But otherwise these are probably cheap enough from Walmart that it'll cost more to ship it than it will be to buy a new one. The modern world, what a problem to have. So until then, I staying right there. If you do got any questions about stuff, you let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get to them. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in today and have a good day.